chat is recording. Hi. <laughs> Pre check. <laughs> we're just checking Pre-flight. that both of us were here. We're here, we're, we're present. Physically, emotionally, <laughs> spiritually, we're here. Yeah, and we're in the same room today. We're in the same room today, finally. Yes. Well, we were in the same, oh no, people will, we were just, we just did a, um, a guest spot on a friend of ours, uh, podcast show called mm-hmm. Rotten Treasure. Um, we will tell you more about that. I'll put the link in the show notes. Uh, we were guests on a podcast about really terrible movies. We had a blast. It's going to come out in February. It I was believe. funny and fun. It was a lot of fun. So yeah. stay tuned for that. But that was the last time we were in the same room together. That was in December. Yeah. And then we went on our holiday. holiday. And then <laughs> you make it sound so fit. We went on a holiday. I don't know. I feel like we it's did a not go to the Swiss Alps. Say. No, we didn't. No. I didn't go anywhere. Um, we took a break for the holidays, mm-hmm. and then when we were about to come back on for our first episode, I got COVID. Mm-hmm. So we had to do that, do it remotely. We did. Which I it was fine, but I didn't love it as much as being I didn't right like it. here. No, it's it was yeah. missing something. Yeah, I didn't feel like it was like our. Like it, yeah, it was missing something. It was missing. Yeah, it was. It. Yeah, yeah. It, it yeah, it wasn't. It was missing wine and proximity. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. I think we do our best work in the same together, group. right? Yeah, yeah, we can feed off each 100%. other. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, so uh, last week was all about resolutions, mm-hmm. um, and I think people are tired of hearing about resolutions. Yeah. <laughs> we now I'm surmised sorry. that that we have surmised <laughs> that people are tired of hearing about resolutions. Yes. Um, but one thing, I forgot to turn the light. There we go. Oh, now we are. Look at that. We're all bright and shiny. We're all shiny bright and shiny now. for the video now. Yeah. I forgot to turn on another one of the lights. Um, but I, I think as a follow-up, an interesting follow-up to resolutions is a question of guilt. Yeah. Feeling guilt. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and I felt... That would be a good thing to talk about today, a question of why do we always feel so guilty? I can only speak for myself, but I find a lot of times I'm feeling guilty about a lot of stuff. Yeah. And I, it, it makes me think of the question, like, why, why do we feel so guilty all the times about certain things? Where does the guilt come from? Why are we such a guilty species? <laughs> We are a guilty species. <laughs> I mean, we are talk, we're talking about guilty pleasures and like guilt. It's it's like woven into the fabric of our being. And mm-hmm. I'm like, what? Why? What's the deal with guilt? I don't know. I mean, I've been thinking about this and I don't know. But what comes to mind for me is, and, and it might just be because of, I don't know, who's in my life and who I work with in my, my, in my profession. But... There's just so many people that are perfectionists and struggle with being selfish. You know, everything's about everybody else. So I gotta keep everybody happy. I've gotta do everything perfectly. Um, And if I make a mistake, it's all self-punishment. It just seems to be, again, it might be my line of work and who I've had these conversations with, but it just seems like a lot of people are very quick to put a lot on themselves when things don't go the way they had anticipated. Yeah, I, I hear all that. I, ch- I tick all those boxes in my myself. Um, I, I looked up the definition of guilt, the dictionary definition, oh, before we I did a little bit of homework. Showing right, off. you know, I'm I'm slipping into my old production assistant mode when I used to live in LA. Um, But the dictionary definition of guilt is a feeling of responsibility or remorse for some offense, crime, wrong, etc., whether real or imagined. And from that, I get offense, crime, wrong. It's all this negative, like Like serious thing. Like Like you, you need to be in jail. If you're in jail, maybe you should feel guilty. Right. Something I don't know. But I think what we're talking about is that pervasive kind of low level behind the scenes guilt of like oh I didn't do this thing or I feel like I let somebody down or I let myself down Mm -hmm. and I think it's it's good 
I'm a word guy and I love like digging into the words people use and why they use them and the definition of the words, like the connotation and the mm-hmm. denotation and all that. So I like starting at the beginning of like, all right, what does guilt actually mean? And guilt is like, you did something seriously wrong to somebody. You committed some kind of bad offense yeah. against somebody mm-hmm. that you need to feel sorry for, you know, or right. remorseful for. And that's like, yes, in certain situations, totally warranted. Mm-hmm. But I think what we're talking about is like the little day to day things that where guilt really doesn't fit. Well, the definition says perceived. <clears throat> Right, whether real or perceived. I think that's a lot of what we're <laughs> what we're talking about. That you're talking about, you've done, I've done. Um, it's it's probably more leaning on the perceived side than in the actual reality of an offense or whatever those strong words were in there. Very strong words from dictionary. Yeah, yeah. and I think um, I had another thing in my brain. It just ran away, but it'll be back. I was going to say. Um, Yeah. Do you feel mm-hmm. guilty about it? <laughs> <laughs> feel stupid about it. No, don't feel stupid. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Um, I knew it would come back. Uh, that guilt, feeling guilty, just like any other feeling, isn't right or wrong because feelings are not right or wrong. Ah, good point. So I had to put my therapist hat on. Yeah, no, like, I like it. It's not wrong. It's not a wrong thing to feel. You, you can't always help what you feel. Right. But it's about when that feeling comes up, if it is a perceived wrongdoing or not being perfect or whatever, it's what we then do with it. You know, mm-hmm. how do we cope with it? How do we hopefully talk ourselves through it? How do we move forward? Because it can, it can make us stuck. Yeah. Where do you think it comes from? Because I, I feel like, for I can only speak for, for myself and my experience in my life, but I feel like I was raised... I don't feel like I was raised. I was raised Roman Catholic. And Catholicism, for anybody who doesn't know, is a very guilty religion. As charged. Guilty as charged religion. You know, it's, it's, you, you, you rack up, it's like this weird pyramid scheme in some way where you like rack up all these guilt points during the course of the week. And then you go to confession. And then you go to confession. <laughs> You're all better. That's your get out of jail free card. You're all better. He wipes the slate clean. You do a few Hail Marys. And then you rack up guilt points again the next It's like almost going to Subway. Like, here for my free sub. Yeah. I've, I've had got, five punches on the I've card. had, right. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like that, and I can't, again, I can only speak for myself. I can't speak for all organized religions. But I feel like that has a lot to do with the two of, like, how you are raised and what how how life it, and guilt are kind of framed within. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, I was raised the same way. 12 years, all-girl Catholic school. All-girl Catholic high school? Yeah. Right. Oh, no, like grade school and high school? Yeah. Was it all one? No, I went to two different schools, but it was all girls the whole way through. Wow. Yeah. And so That's I- a whole other episode. How do you feel like that? <laughs> well, we won't get into all that personal <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know about that. No, there was goods and bads to it. But I, I, I you know, and I don't want to offend anyone that's Roman Catholic because I was raised that way as well. But mm-hmm. it definitely did create a lot of that because it was like, it almost felt like you should be really like scared and, and feel really, really bad if you did something wrong. And I don't even think if you believe in Jesus, not to get on a kick here, but if you even believe in Jesus, that's not even what they teach that he was, he's all forgiving and da, da, da. but it was like as a child, first of all, it's a lot to understand as a very small mm-hmm. child. And then, you know, you do something wrong and you're like bad. And if you don't go to confession, you're going to hell and right. all that kind of stuff. But I also think you're right when you said about the way you were raised, because it's also about, um, perhaps how your parents, uh, reacted or treated you when you did do something wrong. Mm-hmm. Were you shamed? Mm. Guilt and shame. I was thinking this when we were talking before we started, Man. that shame came, popped up in my head, actually, um, when we were talking. I just didn't say it on the mic. But yeah, if you were ashamed, if you were guilted, which is probably in your definition, mm-hmm. uh, then then that, that sticks with you. Yeah. Uh, guilt and shame are like the Bonnie and Clyde of, of emotions for everybody. And I thank you for bringing up shame because that's like, 
it they both are used speaking of religion and again <laughs> Uh, this is my. We've, well, we've let, lost every religious listener right now. They all just tuned right on out. All the Roman Catholics have went tuned to pray out. For us. That's fine. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I I take prayers. I also take a Visa and Mastercard. <laughs> um, uh, guilt and shame are used in some contexts to keep people in line. They're mm -hmm. they're more of a punitive. Uh, framework or like guardrails for people especially when it comes to like following a specific doctrine mm -hmm. and you can actually you can expand that to anything like any kind of of diet program or exercise program any kind mm -hmm. of self-improvement thing where it's like if you look hard enough there's some guilt and some shame in there somewhere yeah you know yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm going off topic for a minute. Please. Because we didn't say out loud and mention the fact that we're both wearing flannels today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> People who are watching I us on YouTube. I was just looking at us and I was like, we're kind of dressed the same today. Yeah. Check all us out our, on YouTube if you care. All of our YouTube anyway, followers will see. I didn't mean see. to digress. No, it's okay. I We uh, are looking good today, I think. We're in our, I like our, this shirt. our warm. We, I always have this. This is like one of my shirts I always return to. Cause it's like it's soft, it's comfortable. Yeah, I like the buttons. It's and I like in. the double pocket situation. Yeah, I've always been a fan of that. Yeah, I, I like that too. Oh, I have one pocket. I never like if you're gonna put one, put the Wait, other one. Why leave that one? Why alone? leave one? I don't know. It might feel guilty because it's there and, and it took the place <laughs> of a different pocket. It's there by itself. Anyway, anyway. I really got a soft track. So no, no, no. It's fine. I like it. Um, yeah, guilt and shame. Uh, are used to keep people in line more than anything by uh, re religious organizations, by diet and exercise programs. It's a really good way, really good, <coughs> um, inexpensive way, because it costs no money. No, nope, not that I know. Right? It's free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, monetarily, it's free. I just had a really weird question, but I didn't want to cut you off. No, please ask. I was just wondering, is guilt a taught feeling? Mm. I I don't I don't even know where I'm going with this. It just popped up, and I was like, wait a minute. If you never experienced it or weren't shamed or guilted, would you feel guilty ever? Like, is it taught almost? Ooh. I don't know the answer to this, just so you know. I just thought about it. I don't know the answer either, but let's let's talk it out. Like, yeah. we were just doing, right before the episode started, we were doing dream interpretations. Oh, yeah. And it was Neither incredible. of us are, right. No, I thought we, I thought we, I, we did good, but none of us. That cat situation was interesting. <laughs> Neither of us are dream interpreters, no. but uh, we did a good job of just talking through it. it does wonders. Um is guilt learned um if there's anybody listening yeah. who knows the answer to that question is a uh not a biologist but a i don't know anthropologist or i don't know something i don't know anybody listening who may know the answer who doesn't need to google it uh let us know but let's talk through it is guilt taught i would say here's my my two cents. I think people have an innate sense of right and wrong. I was just going to go here. Go ahead. And I think people are born with an innate sense of empathy mm -hmm. towards other people mm -hmm. and towards anything, really. Um, and I feel like if we hurt somebody else or something else, like an animal or a pet or something... I think there's a there's a natural biologic biological tinge of ooh I feel bad about that mm -hmm. kind of thing, but I think guilt is a very uh, a very constructed new Homo sapien thing where we kind of took that natural feeling oh i love this and put these yeah. these like boundaries on it and said no it's this thing and it's very bad but then that goes to what back to what you said is that feelings aren't bad for good or bad they just are 
where I went in my head was thinking about a child. Um, you know, children develop empathy. I, I don't, I should refresh myself on the developmental stages right now, but I'm not remembering like when different things develop, but let's just say it's around three, four, mm -hmm. where they, they start to understand empathy. They start to feel empathy. Their world sort of starts just not be all just so much around them. Um, but I was thinking about that. And then I was thinking the way in which adults around them react to their bad air quotes behavior is a big indicator as to whether they're going to develop feelings of guilt and shame or whether or not, I don't know what the other feeling would be like, for instance, um, a, I'm on a child thing for a second, but if you have a child and they are, they, they do something wrong and you are attack or, or criticizing or coming at them about who they are, like you're a bad boy you're really bad, and bad boys are this, and bad boys are that, or bad girls are this, or bad girls are that. Bad boys for life. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not saying it the best way, but I think that versus what you did was a bad thing. That sends a very different message to a child. Oh, like you are not your actions? Yeah. Oh, Which I doesn't like mean that somebody wouldn't feel, feel badly about actions but when you make it inherently about them being bad i don't know if i'm on a if this is making sense it, it is okay then i think i say that every week but <laughs> i'm thinking i'm just thinking out loud so sometimes i'm like does that make any sense um yeah mm. i think that that's the part where it's taught a little bit there yeah no i like i like where your head's at with parents seeing their kid do something and it's a lot of them putting their yep. insecurities mm -hmm. onto kids and i i um i liken this back to having a kid that is lgbtq you know a lot of times kids will start growing and exploring and like maybe they'll wear something their parents don't agree with or they'll talk to somebody that or you know they'll look something up on the internet and instead right. of Instead of saying, being cur approaching Curious. it from cur a state of curiosity mm -hmm. and being, oh, you know, is that something you're interested in? Is that something you like to wear? And in, in saying, you know, self-expression, you know, it's, it's okay. Putting their own belief system on it and then immediately framing it in terms of guilt and shame of like, you can't wear that. That's bad. You are now bad because you wore that. You don't want to be a bad person, do you? Well, then you can't wear that anymore. And you can't think that way. You can't look that up on the internet. You can't talk to those people because that will make you a bad person. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. I mean, I don't, it, it's, I'm still on, on the fence as to whether it's a taught feeling, but I think that there's some people that it comes so quickly to like the guilt and shame quick all the time. Any little thing we do, the guilt, shame, guilt, shame. And I think that does probably speak a lot to how we were raised, unfortunately. Well-intentioned parents, I'm sure, didn't necessarily, but that stuff sticks with kids. Like, that's, uh, yeah, they, they internalize it, mm -hmm. like we were saying. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why I, I, I've done some parenting work, and I've always said, like, you separate the behavior from the child. Like, it's not the child, it's the behavior that's bad. Right. <clears throat> right, and, and framing it in a way of, you know, let's look at that from an objective point of view. Mm -hmm. It's it's something that you did. Why did you do it? How can we do better next time? It doesn't say anything about you. Which, and there's always going to be an exception to the rule. We're not talking about, like, serial killers or anything. Where it's <laughs> like, there's just an right. inherent, like, there's something wrong at a base level there. It's just, like, average kids doing things, and it's like... I think as a society, we just need to get better at framing things in a less guilt slash shame lens. Because I think that's the first thing we go to. Because again, like I said, it's easy, it's free, mm -hmm. and it keeps people in line to, and, to, their, to their detriment. It causes damage. Yeah. yeah. It's less work, like, to be honest. Just and I'm not a, in that category. Yeah, and I'm not a parent. I um, mean, neither. So I am a favorite uncle, though I do have some uh, nieces and nephews, and you know, I, I get it. Parenting is hard, yeah. I'm, and I'm not. I'm not digging. 
you know, on anybody who is trying their best at, at parenting and raising kids, especially right now, my God. Yeah. Ugh. And the way the world is right now, good, you know, you deserve all the money in the world. Um, but it, it is something to think about in terms of <clears throat> stopping cycles of, of thought that we have as a society that we've just, we've just kind of, I don't know if given up is the right word, but like we've kind of settled on is like, oh, it's just the way it is. Yeah. And again, I think even a parent that would react that way that, you know, oh, you, you did about your bad or whatever, you know, they're well intentioned. I mean, they're, they're trying to teach a child right from wrong. That's what, that's the intent, mm -hmm. you know, and the reason we're talking about children so much, at least from my perspective is because I think a lot of this quick to shame, quick to guilt comes from childhood, unfortunately. And you know, I would probably say, this is just a guess off, this is, I have no research about, behind what I'm about to say, but I always believe that 99% of parents do their best and try their best and aren't intending to hurt their children. Um, and so I think even when stuff like this has happened, it's been, the in intent has been on the best interest of the child, of teaching them something, of, um, you know, and, and unfortunately the way that children internalize some of these messages is, doesn't go that way exactly. And something you said on a previous episode, I believe it was handled, How to Handle the Holidays. Uh, maybe the last episode? No, it wasn't the last episode. Anyway, it was, it was last the last season. episode, I think, of last season. It was last season. Yeah. Go look it up. Uh, how do I handle stress on the holidays or something like that? You brought up a great point of parents are their own people. You know, they're just not parents. They bring their life experience to the role of parent. Mm -hmm. And so they're their own separate person their own separate stuff trying to parent through the lens of things that they were taught mm -hmm. and their shame and their guilt about stuff so thinking of it that way as well i think is helpful not uh not pre not judging people by the role they have but like the person they are you know what's, what i just thought of is yes. how closely associated this is also with the i'm sorry's mm. oh yeah or at least this, i'm feeling like yeah, that it's sort of like the I'm, I'm sorry's all the time can be saying I'm sorry for those of you that didn't listen, how we do it way too much, can be almost the damage control to not upset anyone or feeling guilty about something they might have said or not said or done, mm -hmm. even little dumb things. Like I didn't hold the door for somebody, so I'm, I'm sorry. It's like damage control so I don't feel guilt or shame. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny, I, I'm working with a client right now who's literally working on many things, many, many things actually. But one of the things is stop, is to pay attention and c catch themselves with not saying I'm sorry so much. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's interesting, um, I'm on a tangent, I'll be done in a minute, but <laughs> I think it's interesting because it, it's actually made them feel better about themselves and more confident and more what, like... What has catching themselves and not saying that it's sorry, things oh, that they don't need to yeah. say they're sorry for. So anyway, I'm, I'm done with that tangent, but I don't know. I think it's related a little bit. It's empowering. Y yeah. Because saying I'm sorry, feeling guilty, feeling guilt and shame and apologizing yeah. when you didn't even do anything is giving over all of your power mm -hmm. to somebody for yeah. absolutely no reason. Yeah. That's a good way of putting it. And for, for somebody to stop themselves and say, I don't have to say I'm sorry is empowering because you're you're stopping yourself from giving that power over. Yeah, that makes sense. Right? Mm -hmm. That's the smartest thing I've said all week. It was, yeah. Actually, I love the way you put that. I, I have to wrap done. it up in a bow. That's it. I'm glad I got it on tape because yeah. nobody's going to believe me. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. That's the thing. Again, it's about power. Guilt and shame keep people down at the you know keep people in a in a place of power at the expense of the person it's it's aimed at and then you have this this natural byproduct byproduct of it of saying i'm sorry and apologizing for everything because you've done something to feel guilt and shame about which nine times out of ten you didn't and you shouldn't but you know there it is and yeah it's just this weird vicious cycle I don't think it always has to be within a construct, though. I think like, we create our own, like, in our head. Oh, absolutely. That, you know, people aren't doing anything, but we're, we're, we think, any, like, back to what I said initially, we might have done something wrong, we 
somebody's upset, uh, something's late that shouldn't be late, whatever it is. And it just sets the bells off with the guilt and shame. So it's, it's not that it's sometimes it's completely internal. It's nothing to do with what's going on, mm -hmm. but it's about the relationship that that individual has with themselves as well as their expectations of themselves. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I catch myself doing it during the day too. Like little, little silly things of like, Oh, I gave that person a like on their LinkedIn post when it should have been a celebrate. So I'm like, <laughs> man, I feel guilty about that. I should apologize. Or like, uh, doing dishes or like when, when Dan comes down, he's like, oh, you're doing the dishes. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Should I? Oh, I'll, I'll you know, it's this weird, like, just freaking do the dishes. Like there's no, I overanalyze things so much. And I know it's my own psychosis that I'm explaining to everybody right now, but it's like little things like that can pop up during the day. And like you said, it's, it's powerful to be able to stop yourself and say, no, there's, I gave that person a like. That's absolutely appropriate and fine. Yeah, self-talk can be helpful. Well, it's helpful in so many ways. <clears throat> but I think it can be helpful in those instances. And that, and I know that the clients I've worked with have found that really powerful with the whole, the yeah, I'm sorry thing of like really slowing down and like, no, but I'm really like, what's going on here? And a lot of times that comes from fear of upsetting others. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, I think it's all connected. How much of this is also connected to um, people having certain kinds of brain chemistry? Because I know, for me, I'm self-diagnosing right now. Don't do that. But I feel like I have some like high-functioning anxiety where I'm like constantly fixated on little things like this. Mm -hmm. And I feel like for some people, it's easier to fall into this because they're just predisposed. Yeah. Predisposed. I think with anxiety, absolutely. Yeah, I think if you have an anxious personality and a lot of times, not all the time, that's very much coupled with insecurity within yourself. Mm -hmm. And so then the idea of doing anything wrong, yeah, sorry, I sorry, I sorry, I sorry, I sorry, I sorry, sorry. I just think I just did the little kid, I sorry, I sorry, um, you know, can, can, yes, that can exacerbate it, but I don't think it like is the determining factor. Because people's anxiety folk plays out very, very differently. Yeah. Some people's anxiety is very much uh, closed in and, 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 and they suffer alone, kind of. People don't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And I feel like where we're at in this pandemic is I, I feel, I can't put words to it, but I just feel in my gut that we're turning this weird corner in terms of people's mental health where it's going to get weird this year. Yeah, agreed. And I can't put my finger on it. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. just this, this in the background, there's kind of this, this like spidey sense in the back of my brain that's like, oh, things are going to get weird before they get better this year, specifically. And I don't know why. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> and we've discussed possible topics on some of this stuff mm -hmm. um, moving forward. But yeah, I think that... Uh, I could go on for days about this, so I won't. But you, we I, have time. You can go on now if you'd like. Yeah, I think it will be different. I think, um, well, I don't know, should I? You can. I, I was just going to say, again, this is off topic a little bit, but maybe <laughs> it isn't. This is the maybe name of this episode. Yeah, off, off topic. topic. With Chris no, maybe Lewis. it isn't off the topic, though. Uh, just around COVID with the way it's affecting relationships and um, mm -hmm. ending relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as what people have differing ideas around safety, have differing ideas around vaccinations, have um, differing ideas about how you should be testing, what test you should be taking, what test is acceptable, where you should be going, and how that's had effect socially and, and on relationships specifically with people. And, um, I think I, I saw it before, but I feel like it's it's just shifting. I don't know if it's different from last year. I mean, last year was kind of like everybody's in the same boat. This is it. There's no vaccination. This is what you should do, period. And now I feel like there's all these different variables milling mm -hmm. around, and people have different ideas and thoughts. And um, 
you know, for themselves. And I, I just see it affecting people's relationships a lot. And that, that makes me sad because it's like one thing, physical health, okay, fine. We're probably, most people are decent if they're vaccinated, if they get it. Most people don't get, go to the hospital. But there's all these other ramifications and yeah. Do you think people are starting to separate out um, strata wise? I keep going back to like <clears throat> the, um, like the, the, the mantle of the earth and how there's different layers of rocks. Like people are starting to sift out into I'm fully vaccinated and boosted and I'm wearing my mask and I'm like, I'm around here. And then somebody who doesn't believe in vaccines, but still wears a mask is over here. And oh, another yeah. person, and it's like, we're starting to separate out into these different weird layers or like, yeah. Communities. Yeah. I think we're definitely, doing a whole lot of that and I think there's like I, I don't know I, I'll speak on I feel like I'm, I'm bleeding on my face but I'm not sure okay that was cute um no you're not okay, I don't good. think you are all right good thank you sorry <laughs> sorry you we're too. all over the place today no I think <laughs> I, I mean I, I don't want to speak for other people although I've had this conversation with many people of like a guilt feeling of the idea that it was uh, it was me that brought COVID to X place or mm -hmm. <coughs> Sorry. bless you. <laughs> I sneezed all over my face. Um, or the idea that um, just feeling guilty when it's not even your fault, like just mm -hmm. feeling bad if you um, might've been the person that was exposed and infected other people, or you think you might be, or you're not, you know, that's where guilt, I can talk for me. Uh, came up and I knew in my head because this is what I do for a living that like I didn't do anything wrong and I didn't do anything irresponsible but I still felt badly mm -hmm. if, if in fact it was me that other people got sick mm -hmm. and Erin was okay but it's just still like it's hard to shake that and harder than like a lot of other situations I've, I've been like ah I know this is a silly like it's, a, it's not a silly it's a feeling but I, I also know that it doesn't make sense, but it was still there. Yes. And I, I think <clears throat> there's a distinction that's happening. What we've been talking about previously before this point was kind of like, oh, I said something I should have, shouldn't have, or I, you know, right. did something I shouldn't have. And it's like a very finite ramification of it. There's a word that I'm missing, but like a... A result of the action yeah but with COVID it's like oh I I might have got somebody sick which is like has all these tendrils of possibilities that come from it which is a mm -hmm. little different but <clears throat> you're right it is on a on a base level it is the same of like I know in my logical mind what happened and it was like okay N not not everything I'm thinking happened actually happened and not all the mm -hmm. ramifications that I think are going to happen happen. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, how can you how can you separate out the guilt and shame from the actual reality of? Yeah. Yeah. That's the big. To be honest, it was tough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just cuz again, I don't even have confirmation that I was the one that brought COVID to this gathering. But uh yeah, people's lives are uprooted. People are, to me, it wasn't so much around people getting really, well, it was with one, one friend because she's uh, got some um, pre-existing conditions. That was a little bit scary mm -hmm. um, on just a general health basis. But it was also just like people have to quarantine and people can't go do, like, go see family or uh, they have to be stuck in their, in their place or they can't work, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I just battled with it because I knew in my logical mind that it was not something I'd done intentionally by any means, if in fact I even was me. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also just, and also a very empathetic person, so I guess I also feel empathetic, empathy for how it's affected other people. Yeah, but also I think there's, there's factors that can go into it of, are you generally responsible? Like you're all vaxxed and boosted and wear your mask mm -hmm. and like distance and all that stuff. So I mean, at some point you have to say, listen, I'm a pretty responsible person. I've done everything I'm supposed to do. I came out like it was it was something that was not intended nor foreseen that right. happened. Right. And I think that's a big part of it. And also 
the you don't you don't show up positive five seconds after you're exposed to somebody. It takes some incubation time. So even then, it's like a lot of times we just don't know, and we we take risks hanging out with people. Yeah, you know, and yeah. it's we knowingly take the risk because it's like you weigh the pros and cons of. Yeah. All right, listen, I'm I I am a fairly safe person. I wear my mask everywhere. I social distance. I haven't left the house in forever. You know, I'm going to go to this party and hang out with people because I want to because I need that human interaction. You need to. Yeah, you need to. It's a physical, like mental, emotional need at this point. So, I mean, that's my two cents. I mean, if you're somebody who's generally very responsible and safe, and even if it, you know, there is a question of who was the actual, you know, patient zero. So, mm -hmm. I mean. Right. Yeah. But I've had the same conversation with clients and like, this is, this is kind of where I've been on a kick about it. Like, the way that COVID is affecting <clears throat> people's relationships, people's feelings about themselves, especially for people that are already struggling with some mental health sure. issues. You know, then it, it can really exacerbate it you know like it did last year i mean this is not that different we're going on three years of this now yeah i almost cursed in my head i really, <laughs> I really just cursed in my head thank you god you may have to start sometimes i have a filter a explicit box and yeah this no i i think when this topic comes up i want to like scream every ex expletive or whatever it is yeah I think I can. yeah well i i i think Another another um, saying that comes to mind about all this is assume best intentions. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't think any of us, hopefully not, know anybody who would knowingly harm people or like right. knowingly get people sick. Right. And I, I feel you have to assume like if it did happen, it's like, I didn't mean like it wasn't on my list of things to do that day. Right. Like, buy eggs, go play tennis, get people sick. Yeah, you know, I'm going to go to New Year's Eve party and just infect everybody right. there. Woo, let me sneeze You're everywhere. You're not typhoid Mary, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, and I think, I, I mean, I heard somebody say, eventually we're all going to get it. I mean, it's just inevitable. You oh, can't, I think so. You can't, yeah. if you haven't gotten it already. I don't know, I think there's some people that maybe just their body chemistry and the way they've their reactions to the vaccine might not. Yeah. I don't know. You know, uh, but that's the, that's few and far between. Right. I don't think that's the majority. Right. And like something my mom said, she, when my parents just tested positive and they are elderly, I was going to say ancient. <laughs> <laughs> they don't listen to this. It's fine. Thank they're, God. Old. they're old. <laughs> my parents are in their 80s. So they're in a very high risk group. Luckily, they're fine, but you know. <laughs> they 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 subscribe to a certain point of view about vaccines and masks. I'm not going to get into it, but you know, my mom said, "Well, uh, your brother your brother is fully vaccinated, and boosted, and he's sick. So what does that say about the vaccine?" And I'm like, "The vaccine doesn't prevent you from getting sick. It prevents you from getting really sick and dying." And it sometimes you are asymptomatic, and sometimes, like you said, it's like I didn't get anything. I feel fine, you know. Mm -hmm. It helps you to fight it off. It's not no. There's no 100% foolproof anything, and it's like, why do I have to explain that? I know we're getting off topic we're about off. guilt, but we're totally off topic. But getting getting back on uh, back onto the on ramp to the freeway. Um, yeah, I, I assume best intentions, and I feel like. In any situation, if if there is any if there's any doubt or question about what happened and who's responsible for it, I think assuming best intentions and saying, you know, if it was me, well I I didn't knowingly do anything or go yeah. in meaning to hurt people, so it's like hopefully that tempers it a little bit. And sometimes it's not even about the other people's reactions, it's your own stuff, which goes back to just like right. maybe people's tendency to easily feel guilt right and shame right you know and i don't know if i i said that about myself or not but i it was just it might have been mine might have been coupled with some just feeling empathy and bad for people too like not that not all self-blame but what, i i digress but yeah. i think we've been digressing all that empathy way. going amok yeah yeah we still i would love for somebody to chime in on this 
is guilt taught or if is it at all taught how, how how does that work i i would love to know the answer to that question something like, that's a lot of these shows we just come up with more questions and answers you but. just talk a bunch of mm-hmm, we, <laughs> no bs we don't talk bs but we talk we just we talk off the top of our heads that's why we're all over the place but that if it was scripted good, we wouldn't be <laughs> but if it was scripted it wouldn't be it'd be boring as yeah it would be like watching the nightly news yeah which I do not do. No. Oh, I sometimes I do. Sometimes. Sometimes I'll do a David Muir. Oh, ABC. I'm an ABC girl. Okay. Muir. But I, I like Lester Holt. Isn't that his name? Yeah. I'm not opposed to him. I only know Lester Holt through Dateline NBC. I watch that. Oh, I like I like The him. Murder Mysteries. Oh, so good. We're all the same ending, Ralph. Not necessarily. Is there a zinger in there sometimes? There, are, there are, sometimes there's a twist. Oh. And okay. you don't see it coming. Oh. It's usually the boyfriend. Of course. It's always... <laughs> right. Just kidding. 90 percent of the time, it's it's the boyfriend. Spoiler <laughs> alert for any... Dateline watchers. Dirt, dateline watchers out there. Um, so, what, what can we have uh, people walk away from, from today? Confused? Confused. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Feeling, feeling I'm confused. Just kidding. What was the topic today? Uh, no, I'm kidding. From reality. Um, I think it's important to acknowledge the feelings of, of guilt and shame, but I also think that it's important to, if, if possible, maybe you need help doing so with the professional, but um, being able to recognize or talk, talk to yourself about what, what's going on, about the feeling, and, and trying to figure out ways to sort of alleviate that and, and if possible, talk yourself out of it, but that, that may not be that simple. but. The guilt is only sending you into a position of obviously self-blame, um, not liking yourself. It's just reinforcing that. So whatever strategies people can come up with to try to um, keep it from going that direction or challenging that direction. Yeah. Question and challenge. Yeah. And every chance you get. Yeah. That's my... I do a... I do a, a presentation about self-talk, and that's those are my three things. Uh, notice, challenge, change. Yeah, I love that. Oh. Right? Not notice that you're doing it. Challenge it with questions of, like, why am I doing this? Where is this coming from? And then you, it's easier to change it and, like, put another healthy habit in that place. Oh, yeah, I love that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh. Super simple. Yeah. Well, I say that as the professor. No, it's simple. a nice, simple way of explaining it. It's very difficult to do all three steps. Yeah. Even doing notice, even noticing, like, oh wow, I do that a lot. That's one. That's a great yeah. place to start. And if then, you're doing that, great. Noticing it is one, and then two is trying to to do it different. So that might mean you do it again, but you catch yourself, mm -hmm. and you do something a little bit different. Um, you know, it, it's, and sometimes it's a ping pong between, someone used that term today with me, of like doing what you always do and then having that new voice speak up and be like, but wait a minute, maybe we shouldn't be feeling guilty. And then you're kind of having that back and forth between what I call kind of like a negative self-talk and a positive mm -hmm. self-talk. Yeah. And... Um... Something else, another question that I, I love, and it has to, I saw it on a post on TikTok from somebody who was like, if you want to challenge somebody who asked you a really dumb question, like trying to get a rise out of you or like make, makes a dumb joke or something that's like meant to offend you, the, the best way to kind of air quotes, get back at them is just to ask them, what did you hope to accomplish with that? <laughs> That's smart, you know, right? Yeah, that would be annoying. Make people answer for it, and you can do that to yourself too. Like if you find yourself getting into this pattern of like guilty, like oh man, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, I feel so guilty. What am I accomplishing with this? Making yourself feel terrible, right? And negatively affecting your yeah. self your self image, your relationship with yourself, really. And that's not, most often that's the answer. Oh, I'm just making myself feel bad. Yep. Okay. I that's, almost cursed again. I don't know why. I'm gonna need to curse. Again. We have to have an episode when that's we, like when we sign off. I'm gonna just throw a bunch of curse words. We have to have a blue episode where we can just curse all we want. Oh boy, that'll be that'll a fun be a, one. <laughs> that'll be. <nice. laughs> Um, so yeah, I think if, if you are somebody who is 
uh, prone to feeling guilty and shameful about things that really don't warrant feeling guilty or shameful about do what we, you know, do what we've been talking about. Question it. Like, why, why am I doing this? What's the point of this? Where is this coming from? Is this serving a purpose? And, you know, just noticing it is a great first step, but then being able to say, how can I do this differently next time? I'm going to catch myself and I'm going to do X. Mm -hmm. Adding the little, little, like we said in the last episode, little tiny steps, move you down the field and yep. that's all you yep. need. No big, yeah. no big jumps. And, um, Connect with other people about it, too. Don't right. keep it to yourself. I think guilt and shame, love, they separate us. And they're they make quiet. us feel, they're quiet and they separate and us. And strong. And they make us feel alone. Mm -hmm. So the more you can connect with other people that you trust and care about and say, oh, I have this, you know, can I talk to you about this? Or I'm doing this thing. It's just nice to talk it out with somebody, mm -hmm. too. Absolutely. Yeah, I love the way you sum that all up. That's one of my superpowers. I'm sum up man. Love it. I am the most boring X man ever. It's my superpowers. <laughs> I just sum stuff up. <laughs> hey, you guys going to a battle today? Not you, sum up guy. <laughs> we don't. We'll we'll talk to you afterwards about it. You can yeah. sum it up for us. That's all right. I like it. <laughs> I, I I'm, you're my favorite superhero. Oh, thank, you're my favorite. Mm -hmm. what, what would your superpower be? If you were mm -hmm. X man. Um, I would like to be a, an invisible fly on the wall because I'm super nosy and I want to be able to go Ooh. in and see what's going on with people that are, I want to go see what's going on. So you on. would be like, a, um, oh, what's her face like from invisible. Fantastic, Sue Storm from Fantastic Four. Yeah, that's sure. She can turn visible and she can make force fields. Okay, yeah, that's me. Okay. Yep. And she can fly, I believe. Oh, I love that too. Yep. Okay. Let's do it. Done. Done. All right, great. All right, next week. Uh, Storm. Next week. <laughs> It's all about uh, superheroes. Um, awesome. I, we hope we we uh, plumb the depths of <laughs> guilt and shame and, and you came out the other side with something you can use. Um, our contact information is on our website. So look at this. Uh, look at the show notes for this episode and any other one. And you can find out ways to get in touch with us. Um, That's it. Thanks. Excellent. We're going to go finish our wine. Yes. Fist bump. Uh, we'll see y'all next time. See you next time. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Bye. Great. I think it was good that we kind of went all over and connected everything. I think so. I don't. I don't. I like when we go off tangent because I think it's a fun conversation. I don't think you ever have to apologize. For no, going I, off. I know. I <laughs> sometimes could really get going if I don't stop myself. So I'm like, oh. But I actually thought it all connected in a weird way. I think so too. I, I think guilt is a weird. It is a weird, huge uh, a topic that has its fingers in a bunch of different pies. So I feel like. No, I kind of feel very interested in like figuring out that question. Yeah. Right. I don't know. It's a feeling. Do you know? I don't know.